Catfish with a cowboy hat. Yeah, I reckon that's just what you're wanting to do, eh? My goodness. What? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I believe that. Anyway, that's too comical. My goodness. The catfish trying to get some style first. He didn't want all that attention, remember? Put on himself and now look at him. Okay. Uh, we got to get you out of the way. I'm like, you're blocking our video. And... Oh, so you're still doing that disappearing act, are you? I'm going to start calling you the, uh... Oh, I see. Yes, you've <laughs> you've gotten yourself a cloaking device. Okay, yes. Okay, but I think I've heard it all. Okay, hey, you know why we're here. We're here to have maybe have a little bit of fun, but we are actually here to do some review, my friends, and this is page 103 from your Go Math. We're doing chapter two. This is the second video. Yes! Let's do it, my friends. Oh, I'm excited. We got a big, huge uh, square here. What do we have here? It says divide 575 by 14 by using partial quotients. What is the quotient? Okay, and then explain your answer using numbers and words. Okay, this is heavy duty, huh? No multiple choice. We just, you have to do the work. Well, let's go ahead and set this problem up. So I'm going to go ahead and write my 575, that is my dividend, followed by the divisor of 14. We want to divide the 14 into 575, but we want to use partial quotients. And I think you recall in a previous lesson we learned that we could take multiples of 10, if we will, take 10 groups of 14. And by doing that, it makes this a little bit easier to solve. So if we took 10 times 14, we would get 140. And notice we're not writing any digits above the dividend up here for the quotient. We're just taking that group of 10. So you kind of start my column here, if you kind of did that. And we could say so far, we know the quotient's at least 10. Because look at our remainder, it's much larger than our divisor. We can easily take out another 14. I mean, I'm sorry, another 10 of, of groups of 14, and we end up with that 140 again. Now, I can see that I can be, I, I'm able to do it again. So I'm going to go ahead and put my 140. Yes, lucky 140 today. You are the lucky number. So we have 155 still larger, uh, so we can keep going. And it happens to be still larger than our 140. That's why I just keep taking another 10. You're like, wow, Mr. Wara, this looks kind of strange. You're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, until we get to that point, right? Now we have 15, but now looking at a divisor, we're like, oh yeah, it could go in there one more time. So we're going to put our just our like one by 14, giving us just one over here. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract that. Okay, and then of course we can add up. We have, it looks like 41 to me. Well, that means right there, we have 41, but we also have a remainder, a remainder of one because this didn't work out evenly. So we'll put 14, remainder one. So now thinking about what the problem asks us is, is what is the quotient? Well, we know the quotient is of 14, remainder one if we include that. And then it says, explain your answer using numbers and words. So let me think to myself, what I really indeed did here, I, I was actually subtracting multiples of 14 and uh, from the dividend, which was 575, basically until the number left was really less than 14. That's what we did. It got all the way down to one and that's where we had to stop because we could no longer divide 14 into that number. And so I just added the partial quotients together to find what my total quotient was here. So I'm going to go ahead and put those notes down as I thought aloud. Okay, there we go. So here is my response to explain your answer using numbers and words. We did use numbers here and words in our actual response, but we also used numbers here showing our work. What do you think, eh? I like it. Okay, so 
let's go on to the next problem here. It says for numbers 9a through 9c, just choose yes or no to indicate whether the statement is correct. We have 5,210 divided by 17 is 306 with the remainder 8. Okay, well, a couple of things we could do. First thing we'd want to do is you'd want to take that quotient and multiply it by the divisor. That might tell us right away. So I'll do my work right over here and multiply that by 17. Okay, placeholder. Now I have 6, 0, 3. I'm adding and it says 5,202. But looking at our remainder here of 8 would bring us to what we need. 5,210. Yes, this is true. All right, we have to keep checking back on all of these. That's all we can do. 209, we're going to multiply that by 42. That's 18, carry the 1, 0. Bring down my 1 here. We have 4, placeholder. I have 36, so that's 6. I'm going to carry the 3. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3, and then 8. And then here we have, looks like 50 times 20, about 1,000. Doesn't seem too bad. Let's take the 51. Let's multiply that by the 24. And this will really kind of tell you it can't be the correct answer. Look at this place value here. The 4, we know we're going to have a 0 down here, which means you know that our last digit is going to be a 4, and we don't have a 4 here. Look and, and see how it can't be the correct answer. All right, 2, 2, 1. And we have 1,224. So on this one here, I'm going to say no. Now it says divide, draw a picture. And it looks like we have 156 divided by 12 equals a certain quantity. And they're telling us that you know you could use this 100. Uh, we call them flats, but uh, you have your 10 and then you have your little one here. I'd want to show my dividend so you would know that I would have 100. And then if we had 50, that these are 10s. Okay, and then here, I would also want to show that I have six. I'm gonna go ahead and make my like 10 multiples of 12 because I know that will give me 120 like what we were doing on the previous problem so I'm going to bring this one down here and we'll put him like so and then I'm going to also because I want 10 groups of 12 and I only have 10 groups of 10 if I just leave that flat right there now I have 10 groups of 12 here's my 10 right going across but here I have 12 so I'm going to go ahead and, and take away from that 156. So I used one of the flats. Okay, I also used two of my 10s. Okay, and this is what I have remaining now. I have, looks like 10, 20, 30, and then I have 6. So I have 36 left over. Well, you might think immediately, oh, 36? Yes, that's in 12. Oh, I could make three groups of 12 because 12 times 3 is 36. That's exactly what we can do. Let me go ahead and drag one here so here's one two three but that's only of ten so far right so I need I need two more on each one of these to make that happen so there's one and here's two and I'll do the same for the rest and just like that you can see now I have my plus I have plus three because I again I have three more groups that were added now I have my 13 groups of 12 and those were used at the very end. There you go. Walk in the park, huh? Sunny day, leaves come falling on your path. No. Anyway, let's go ahead. It says divide. Show your work. All right, so I can just use a standard algorithm. Just divide. All right, and I'm going to rewrite my problem here so I can make it a little bit larger. I have 5,210. Why does that number sound very familiar? Divide by 17. Now, 17 will go into 52. Won't go into 5. So we have to regroup and do it into 52 hundreds, and that will go in there actually three times, and it will go in there and it will be 51. And 2 minus 1, of course, is 1. A remainder smaller, that's a good sign. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring down my 1. Now 17 won't go into 11, it's still smaller. So when that occurs, after we've brought a number down, we have to be very careful, make sure that we put that 0 up there. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring down my 0. Now I have 110. Now, Looking at this here, thinking, okay, 3 times was 51. If I were to double that, that would be 6. So I'm going to go with 6 times, and then that means I'm just going to double this number, which is 102. And now when I subtract, I have to regroup here, but I end up with a remainder. The 8 is smaller, okay, than the 17. So that's a good sign, meaning that I did take out as much as I needed to. But it also means that I have a remainder 8. The problem only asks that I show my work. I did that. It doesn't say I have to check it, so... All right, 
Let's move down. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> this is all right. What's going on here? <laughs> it's a whole group of them. Oh my goodness. This catfish. He's starting a whole new wave here with a cowboy hat. You guys look so funny. You know, um, all right. So I'm afraid to move you because I'm thinking, do you have that special cloaking device? It's your, I don't know, is that your papa? I don't know. I don't know. Let me, sure enough. Are you all, what are you, born with this skill? Wow, you guys just, I move you and you disappear? That's too, <laughs> you're, you're gone, you're gone. All right. Anyway, choose the compatible numbers, Mr. Wara, would you? That will give the best estimate for 429 divided by 36. Well, I'm looking for compatible numbers, so I'm really going to look at my divisor first. And that looks like 40, so I'm actually going to kind of do this in reverse. And 40 means that I'm looking for a number that's going to be close. Now, 40 works really, really well with 440. Again, I'm looking for that simple fact, 44 divided by 4 would be 11. So, yes, that would be the two I would choose. Key thing is just finding that uh, com uh, compatible number. You always round that divisor and then look at that four and then ask yourself the two digits here. What four? What number could I change that to so that it's compatible with four so I can divide it out? Simple facts. Okay, 13. Sam Samuel needs 233 feet of wood to build a fence. The wood comes in lengths of 11 feet. And it says part A. How many total pieces of wood will someone need? Explain your answer. Uh, and I note in this answer here, it says total pieces of wood. Notice it didn't say, yeah, because if it's sold, it says it comes. When it means that it comes in, it means it's sold by this size. So let's go ahead and do the division here. Because if I have 233 feet of wood, and I need to know how many lengths of 11 feet uh, to purchase, then I need to divide. Now, 11 goes into 23 really nice, doesn't it? Two times. Gives you 22. We subtract and we get 1. Now, I bring down my 3. And then 11 goes into 13 really nice, doesn't it? Wow. Makes this division easy. I wish it was always this way. It only lasts for a little while. I'm just letting you know. It gets harder before you get into 6th grade. Okay? Just giving you a little picture of what is to come. Yes, okay. And now we end up with a remainder too. What does that mean in this problem? In this case, we want to add, this is going to be the plus one. The reason being is, is that he would, if he ordered 21 of them, he'd be able, you know, at 11 feet, each one, um, he, he would need to purchase 21 of them, but he would be short. He wouldn't have 233 feet. He'd only have 231 feet. That would mean one of his boards would actually be nine feet. And he needs full boards. So that means we're going to add one. So that means the answer must be 22. So let me go ahead and write that down. And that also says to explain your answer. Okay, there you go. I know, super fast, huh? Yes, I hope you can read that. That's why I usually type it. Anyway, uh, now it says Teresa needs twice as many feet of wood as Samuel. How many pieces of wood does Teresa need? Explain your answer. Okay, that's kind of an interesting. We're using the word twice as, twice as many. Should kind of ring two times. So if he needs 22, then it would make you think that you would need 44. But... Let me think here for a second. It says that she needs twice as many feet. Twice as many feet. Aha, Mr. Wara. Good thing you did that reread, huh? That reread, draw, write. I could have seen rushing, maybe on a test, and then quickly putting 44 feet, explaining it, and not being careful. So it's really important that we read the question carefully. All right, so now I just made it. So it's feet. Well, since he needed 233 feet, then hers is twice the amount of feet, and that's going to give us 466 feet. Now we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing. We'll take that 466 feet. We'll divide that by the 11. Now 11 goes into 46. Kind of nice with 4, doesn't it? And then that ends up with 44. We're going to subtract, and we get 2. I'm going to bring down my 6. 11 goes into 26. I want to say 3 times, but it does. And it only goes into 2 times, and then that's going to be 22. Now we subtract. Here we get 4. 
So now I get 42, but I'm getting a remainder 4. Well, we're running the same problem. Again, she needs, Teresa needs wood that needs to be whole pieces. They can't be a half of a piece. They don't sell it that way. So she's going to have to do the plus 1. But look at that. 42 plus 1. Look at that's 43. I would have, I would have missed that uh, on a test. See? I'm glad I made the mistake in front of you. You're my witnesses. <laughs> anyway, so it should be 43 pieces. Again, it does say uh, to explain your answer. Six, five, four, three, there we two, go. Oh my goodness, what a long thing. Okay, so I think I pretty much explained it there. Now, I wish you guys the best here with your review here for review uh, two. We'll have one more video coming out. I know, isn't that music nice in the background? Yeah, and all our catfish are gone, no more. Hey, my friends, it is an honor to be with you today. Now, live long and prosper.